Why is everyone paying attention to the Credit Suisse crisis? Because many people are worried that this Credit Suisse crisis will be similar to Lehman Brothers in 2008, which will detonate the global financial crisis. We will update the latest progress in real time. This is V Circle. welcome to follow us to get views on the latest business technology trends. Today we will analyze the ins and outs behind the entire Credit Suisse crisis from a unique perspective, and read some important information from it. First of all, we need to figure out what is the Credit Suisse crisis, how it broke out, and what kind of impact will it have in the end. Then let's take a look at the whole incident. Credit Suisse has been reporting that it may be in financial trouble. This rumor has been widely circulated on social media. There are more and more investors in the market, doubting whether this well-known financial institution will fall into financial difficulties and become the next thunderbolt to detonate the global economic collapse. In order to stabilize the morale of the employees within Credit Suisse, the CEO of Credit Suisse sent a memorandum to the inside, which emphasized that Credit Suisse has sufficient cash and sufficient liquidity, so the situation is very stable, and everyone should not trust the rumors. Unexpectedly, after the memorandum was released, it caused even greater unease in the market. Many outsiders have the opposite understanding. The more soothing the emotions, the more serious the problem. As a result, stocks were sold one after another, resulting in a significant drop in Credit Suisse's share price, which fell very rapidly in early October. At the same time, Credit Suisse's CDS credit default swap price rose as high as 375 at one point. What is a CDS credit default exchange? This is a financial derivative whose price rises when financial credit falls and falls when credit improves. The sharp increase in this data in early October shows that Credit Suisse's credit fell sharply at that time, and the market is losing confidence in it. Immediately after that, the media was flooded with various reports, worried that Credit Suisse would face huge losses next, and whether Credit Suisse would be able to withstand the losses, and would not collapse because of it. Such concerns are not groundless. Looking back at Credit Suisse's historical records in the past two years, it is really not ideal. Let's take a look at Credit Suisse's financial data first. According to the financial data of Credit Suisse in the past three years, we can see that in 2021, Credit Suisse's total revenue has dropped by 15.4%, net profit has dropped by 14.68%, and since 2022, it has dropped by 10.71% and net profit has dropped by 103.61%. After 2021, the company has experienced large losses, and in 2022, it will be even worse. Negative news about Credit Suisse has also continued in the news media. In the past two years, the main news about Credit Suisse has been the loss of investment, the internal replacement of CEO and management, and the use of various methods to cut operating costs, which are basically negative. So now ratings agencies like Moody's and S&P have downgraded Credit Suisse a few months ago. The US Internal Revenue Service has also recently started an internal investigation of Credit Suisse. A series of events have caused investors to gradually lose confidence in Credit Suisse. So, who pushed Credit Suisse to the brink of a cliff? Among the many comments, everyone has a consensus that the main reason for Credit Suisse's crisis is that the Federal Reserve insists on an unswerving policy of raising interest rates in 2022. That interest rate hike will rapidly increase the cost of financial institutions and lead to profits shrink, resulting in a loss in the end. I would say the interest rate issue is not the only straw. Let's talk about two scandals that hit Credit Suisse hard. The first was Greensill's bankruptcy. So what does Greensill Capital do? It is called supply chain finance business. In fact, to put it bluntly, it is a short-term advance payment for goods provided to upstream and downstream enterprises in the supply chain, usually within one to six months. Supply chain finance itself has very little profit. In order to maximize profits, he also issued loans to many financially unstable small and medium-sized enterprises based on invoices and credit card records. Then these loans are packaged into securities products and sold to the market. Funds under Credit Suisse bought a large number of the securities issued by Greensill. As a result, Greensill's cash flow was cut off because of an insurance expiry event, and it went to the end of the supply chain financing leader. In March 21, it declared bankruptcy. This incident directly resulted in a loss of 440 million US dollars for Credit Suisse. 
followed by the second incident, the liquidation of Bill Huang's family office. Bill Huang, the man who have lost the most money in the shortest time in the world. Bill Huang has a family office called Archegos Capital. When Credit Suisse first started their cooperation, I believe they made a lot of money. Bill Huang's investment was relatively profitable before the liquidation. But at the year of 2021, it capsized. At that time, Bill Huang held a heavy position in media companies such as Viacom, and also held a large number of Chinese stocks such as Baidu. As a result, Viacom issued new shares, causing the stock price to drop sharply. At that time, Bill Huang was faced with the problem of insufficient margin, but he did not choose to stop loss, but chose to sell other stocks to increase margin and increase investment on Viacom. As a result, Bill Huang alone caused the Chinese stocks to plummet. Drag half of Wall Street into the water. But in the end, Viacom's share price was not pulled up, so it was a total loss. Bill Huang is also known as the man who lost $20 billion in two days. The incident cost Credit Suisse $5.5 billion directly. The crux of the problem is that a considerable part of Bill Huang's money in stocks is the total return swap contract signed by him and the six major financial institutions on Wall Street with a leverage of five times, which is TRS, total return swap. So what are the benefits of entering the stock market through this method? The total return swap contract is a derivative that allows investors to buy large leveraged equity without publicly disclosing their positions. The external transparency is almost zero, so the concealment is extremely high, and the risk is also extremely high. As a well-known international financial institution and a century-old financial institute, Credit Suisse has been promoting soundness and rationality, focusing on the long-term appreciation of wealth. How could it be involved in such a high-risk business? Is this actually related to Credit Suisse's own positioning? In fact, Credit Suisse is very aggressive in investment, and is willing to try high-risk investments to gain high returns. Most importantly, it has serious problems with risk management. So, always be a catcher. In the first half of this year, the British Guardian took stock of Credit Suisse's scandal records, mainly including money laundering, tax evasion and customer selection. In its history, Credit Suisse has been largely open to clients, especially the powerful and political. Then his clients include political leaders of some countries, political corruption criminals, and some controversial politicians. Some time ago, an internal document of Credit Suisse was disclosed, which involved up to 30,000 historical accounts, with a total of more than 100 billion US dollars of funds. Then if you look at these historical accounts, you can find that most of Credit Suisse's main customer groups are politicians, and many of them are from some more sensitive countries. Then this can also help us understand Credit Suisse's positioning of itself from another aspect, what kind of class it serves, and the more inclined it is to serve a specific class. Then the probability of internal black box operation illegal operation is greater. So, who created the Credit Suisse crisis? Going back to the essence, maybe his conceit, greed, and bottomless are the invisible hands that drag him to the abyss. Credit Suisse, who is stuck in the quagmire, may have to keep fighting to survive. The company is considering several aggressive options, including exiting the US market, laying off more than 10% of its 45,000 global employees, roughly 5,000 people, and splitting its investment banking division into three, according to a September 22nd report by the media. These things are evolving, and we'll be following up on them in the future. Welcome to this channel, if you like it, please follow and like it.